Offside, Wikipedia article audio. Offside is one of the laws of association football, codified in Law 11 of the Laws of the Game. The law states that a player is in an offside position if any of their body part except the hands and arms is in the opponent's half of the pitch and closer to the opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second last opponent. Being in an offside position is not an offense in itself, a player who was in an offside position at the moment the ball last touched, or was played by a teammate, must then become involved in active play in the opinion of the referee, in order for an offense to occur. When the offside offense occurs, the referee stops play and awards an indirect free kick to the defending team from the place where the offending player became involved in active play. Application Offside position Offside offense Offside sanction Officiating History Unadopted experiments Offside trap The offside offense is neither a foul nor misconduct, players are never booked or sent off for offside. Like fouls, however, any play that occurs after an offense has taken place but before the referee is able to stop the play is nullified. One of the main duties of the linesmen is to assist the referee in adjudicating offside their position on the sidelines giving a more useful view sideways across the pitch. Assistant referees communicate that an offside offense has occurred by raising a signal flag, 191 however, as with all officiating decisions in the game, adjudicating offside is ultimately up to the referee who can overrule the advice of their assistants if they see fit. The application of the offside rule may be considered in three steps, offside position, offside offense, and offside sanction. A player is in an offside position if they are in the opposing team's half of the field and is also nearer to the opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second-last opponent. The 2005 edition of the Laws of the Game included a new IFAB decision that stated, in the definition of offside position, nearer to his opponent's goal line means that any part of their head, body, or feet is nearer to their opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second-last opponent. The arms are not included in this definition. By 2017, the wording had changed to say that, in judging offside position, the hands and arms of all players, including the goalkeepers, are not considered. In other words, a player is in an offside position if two conditions are met. A player in an offside position at the moment the ball is touched or played by a teammate is only penalized for committing an offside offense if, in the opinion of the referee, they become involved in active play by. In addition to the above criteria, in the 2017-18 edition of the Laws of the Game, the IFAB made a further clarification that, in situations where a player moving from, or standing in, an offside position is in the way of an opponent and interferes with the movement of the opponent towards the ball this is an offside offense if it impacts on the ability of the opponent to play or challenge for the ball. There is no offside offense if a player receives the ball directly from a goal kick, a corner kick, or a throw in. It is also not an offense if the ball was last deliberately played by an opponent. In this context, according to the IFAB, a save is when a player stops, or attempts to stop, a ball which is going into or very close to the goal with any part of the body except the hands arms. However, an offside offense may not occur if a player receives the ball directly from either a direct free kick or an indirect free kick. Since offside is judged at the time the ball is touched or played by a teammate, not when the player receives the ball, 
it is possible for a player to receive the ball significantly past the second to last opponent, or even the last opponent, without committing an offence. This used to be expressed in the law by International Board Decision 1 to Law 11 using the following phrase, A player who is not in an offside position when one of his colleagues passes the ball to him or takes a free kick, does not therefore become offside if he goes forward during the flight of the ball. Determining whether a player is involved in active play can be complex. The quote, if he's not interfering with play, what's he doing on the pitch? Has been attributed to Bill Nicholson and Danny Blanche Flower. In an effort to avoid such criticisms, which were based on the fact that phrases such as interfering with play, interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage were not clearly defined, FIFA issued new guidelines for interpreting the offside law in 2003 and these were incorporated into Law 11 in July 2005. The new wording sought to define the three cases more precisely but a number of football associations and confederations continued to request more information about what movements a player in an offside position could make without interfering with an opponent. In response to these requests IFAB Circular 3 was issued in 2015 to provide additional guidance on the criteria for interfering with an opponent. This additional guidance is now included in the main body of the law and forms the last three conditions under the heading Interfering with an Opponent as shown above. The circular also contained additional guidance on the meaning of a save, in the context of a ball that has been deliberately saved by any opponent. The sanction for an offside offence is an indirect free kick for the opponent at the place where the player becomes involved in active play even if it is in the player's own half of the field of play. In enforcing this rule, the referee depends greatly on an assistant referee, who generally keeps in line with the second-to-last opponent, the ball, or the halfway line, whichever is closer to the goal line of their relevant end. 176 An assistant referee signals that an offside offence has occurred by first raising their flag upright without movement and then, when acknowledged by the referee, by partly lowering their flag to an angle that signifies the location of the offence. 192 The assistant referee's task with regard to offside can be difficult, as they need to keep up with attacks and counter-attacks consider which players are in an offside position when the ball is played, and then determine whether and when the offside positioned players become involved in active play. The risk of false judgment is further increased by the foreshortening effect, which occurs when the distance between the attacking player and the assistant referee is significantly different from the distance to the defending player, and the assistant referee is not directly in line with the defender. The difficulty of offside officiating is often underestimated by spectators. Trying to judge if a player is level with an opponent at the moment the ball is kicked is not easy, if an attacker and a defender are running in opposite directions, they can be two meters apart in less than a second. Some researchers believe that offside officiating errors are optically inevitable. It has been argued that human beings and technological media are incapable of accurately detecting an offside position quickly enough to make a timely decision. Sometimes it simply is not possible to keep all the relevant players in the visual field at once. There have been some proposals for automated enforcement of the offside rule. Offside rules date back to codes of football developed at English public schools in the early 19th century. These offside rules, which varied widely between schools, were often much stricter than the modern game. In some of them, a player was off his side if they were standing in front of the ball. This was similar to the current offside law in rugby under which any player between the ball and the opponent's goal who takes part in play, 
is liable to be penalized. By contrast, the original Sheffield rules had no offside rule, and players known as kick-throughs were positioned permanently near the opponent's goal. Offside was probably part of the Cambridge rules from their inception in 1848. A rule set dating from 1856 found in the library of Shrewsbury School is probably closely modelled on the Cambridge rules and is thought to be the oldest set still in existence. Rule number 9 required more than three defensive players to be ahead of an attacker who plays the ball. The rule states, If the ball has passed a player and has come from the direction of his own goal, he may not touch it till the other side have kicked it, unless there are more than three of the other side before him. No player is allowed to loiter between the ball and the adversary's goal. When the original laws of the game were first drafted in 1863 no forward passes of any sort were permitted, except for kicks from behind the goal line. The rule states, 6. When a player has kicked the ball any one of the same side who is nearer to the opponent's goal line is out of play and may not touch the ball himself, nor in any way whatever prevent any other player from doing so until the ball has been played, but no player is out of play when the ball is kicked from behind the goal line. As football developed in the 1860s and 1870s, the offside law proved the biggest argument between the clubs. Sheffield got rid of the kick-throughs by amending their laws so that one member of the defending side was required between a forward player and the opponent's goal. The compromise rule that was written into the laws of the game in 1866, and eventually adopted universally, was to adopt a form of the Cambridge rule but with at least three rather than more than three opponents. The rule changed to two opponents in 1925 and led to an immediate increase in goal scoring. 4,700 goals were scored in 1,848 football league games in 1924-25. This number rose to 6,373 goals in 1925-26. In 1990 the law was amended to adjudge an attacker as onside if level with the second-to-last opponent. This change was part of a general movement by the game's authorities to make the rules more conducive to attacking football and help the game to flow more freely. During the 1973-74 and 1974-75 seasons, an experimental version of the offside rule was operated in the Scottish League Cup and Drybro Cup competitions. The concept was that offside should only apply in the last 18 yards of play. To signify this, the horizontal line of the penalty area was extended to the touch lines. FIFA President Sir Stanley Rouse attended the 1973 Scottish League Cup final which was played using these rules. The manager of one of the teams involved, Celtic manager Jock Stein, complained that it was unfair to expect teams to play under one set of rules in one game and then a different set a few days before or later. The experiment was quietly dropped after the 1974-75 season, as no proposal for a further experiment or rule change was submitted for the Scottish Football Association Board to consider. In the 1987-88 season, the Football Association was authorised by the International Football Association Board to test an experimental rule change, whereby no attacker could be offside directly from a free kick. 32 The competition chosen for this experiment was the football conference. The change was not deemed a success, as the attacking team could pack the penalty area for any free kick and the rule change was not introduced at a higher level. Pioneered in the early 20th century by Arsenal and later adopted by influential Argentine coach Osvaldo Zubeldia, 
the offside trap is a defensive tactic designed to force the attacking team into an offside position. Just before an attacking player is played a through ball, the last defender move upfield, isolating the attacker into an offside position. The execution requires careful timing by the defense and is considered a risk, since running upfield against the direction of attack may leave the goal exposed. Now that changes to the interpretations of interfering with play, interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage mean a player is not guilty of an offside offense unless they become directly and clearly involved in active play, players not involved in active play cannot be caught offside, making the tactic more risky. Any part of the player's head, body, or feet is in the opponent's half of the field, any part of the player's head, body, or feet is closer to the opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second last opponent. Flag pointed at a 45 degree angle downwards, offense has occurred in the third of the pitch nearest to the assistant referee, 73, flag parallel to the ground, offense has occurred in the middle third of the pitch, 73. Flag pointed at a 45 degree angle upwards, offense has occurred in the third of the pitch furthest from the assistant referee, 73.